we are It Takes a Journey. It's episode nine and we're showing you how we installed our wiring for our lighting and electricals. We're going to be covering how we installed the cabling, the conduit, how we connected it all together and also how we tested it. And showing you our cool lighting plan that Tom made. In our next episode we'll show you how we installed our insulation. 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 Um, I think we might have the warmest van ever. We should have called our van Mr. Cozy. So subscribe if you want to get notified of our next video and ring that bell. <laughs> At the end of the video, we're going to be covering what didn't work for us, so it can hopefully help you not make the same mistakes. Let's just play the music. talking electronics layout and having a plan of where all your bits are going to go. So it's good to have a, a plan layout because it means you can work out things like how many meters of cabling you need, how many lights you're going to require, also you need to know where you're going to have your batteries and your electronics hub so you know where all your cables are going to be leading to which is always good to know. At the beginning we just had a grid system of eight lights in pairs running down the length of the van after speaking to an interior designer, she advised us to put the lights where we needed them. Which sounds, sounds obvious. <laughs> so in our van we've got our bed, our chairs, our table, kitchen unit, upper cabinets and roof vents to work around. Just a few elements. We're concentrating on lighting because the cables for our lights are going to be running through the walls so we have to do that before we put the walls on. We've chosen it according to the layout of our van so if you're going to be using your van for working for example you want a lot of light around your kind of seating and working area which may not work with a grid system so that's what we've done so we've chosen to have eight of these down lights they're called puck lights and they're really nice and they sit really nicely and flush into the ceiling we've got two of these above the bed on their own circuit and then we have six others that sit kind of above the living area so two above the um, table and the working and the eating area do above the kitchen work surfaces and two in the kind of entrance hallway area if you can call it a hallway yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're calling it a bedroom so why not and the kitchen and the dining we've also got four of these tiny little cute reading lights two above our bed that are going in the middle directed to each person we've got two of these one above each seat and then lastly we have some of these strip lights which come in five meter strips and you can cut them to any length that you like. We're going to have one strip underneath the upper kitchen cabinet and we're going to have one strip underneath the bedroom cabinet. We've chosen to have lots of lights so even on the coldest, darkest, wettest days we can feel cosy and warm inside. We've also chosen to have warm lighting over white lighting but that's a personal preference. The white lighting can be a bit... Stark. Yes, yeah, stark. Bring out your wrinkles. <laughs> we don't want that. And also having lots of different lights and on different circuits gives us lots of options. So if we want to be in the bedroom or someone's still sleeping, you can kind of mm -hmm. separate yourself and it kind of compartmentalises the van, we think. We hope. We hope. <laughs> we are doing electronics! Wires and stuff. What grade did you get in GCSE or A-level? I didn't do electronics. Oh, well. <laughs> Let me tell you about electronics. I did my AS level and got an E, so I really know my stuff. <laughs> my doom! Oh, it would have been so useful to have paid attention. So this is a wire? <laughs> uh, kinda. No, actually, this is conduit. And why do you use conduit, Maxine? <laughs> Maxine Swinho, why do you use conduit? Stop for naming me. Because it protects the wire. And it means that you can change your wires and do your do electronic things when your conversion is finished because you can still move the wires around mm -hmm, without mm -hmm. having to go digging. Okay, let's Hoover. Henry? Henry to the Are you ready? Right, so Henry's always ready. Get some light string, not heavy duty string. 
tie something fluffy that's light that will get s Wait, that adds more. That seems like a juxtaposition of heavy string. Then wouldn't it be rope? Yeah, you're probably right. Get your heavy slash light string. <laughs> <laughs> the idea is that Henry's gonna suck this in, but through the conduit. Let's go. Okay. So get your fluffy bit because it gets sucked. Oh, pop it in, Where's Max it in? Hoover. Where's the end? And then we watch the string <laughs> up there. Okay, let go, Max. It's already there. What? It's already there. You don't have to do that. Ah, a magic trick. Let's do the magic sound. Ta da! <laughs> Right over left, left over right, do it twice, and it seems to hold okay. This is working beautifully well. Oh, there it is! That was so easy! How long do we want it? It never works this easily! Whoa, we're like proper pros now. So now it is thread through, thread through. We have one end. We have the other end. And no, not too close. Just shove it right to the back of the teeth and give it a real good one munch. Yeah, give it a wiggle, hold it still. Yes, label them up because you think you're going to remember which is which, but you won't. Now their mission is tidy up everything, finish off this because all the cables are in the right place. But it's stuff like just putting a few extra cable ties that I've taken down. Been using our router to sort of sink in the cable ties so they are flush with the roof. So we knew our lighting layout, we knew what lights we wanted, and we knew how long our cable needed to be, but we had no idea what to do next. But we'll talk about how to choose your cables and what size cables you need in a later video. However, what we needed to do is to lay our cables in the van and test our lights. So we need to be able to connect our lights and our electronics to our cables. We spoke to our neighbour who is an electrician and knows a thing or two and he helped us fill in the gaps in our knowledge. We used these butt connectors to turn one piece of cable into two pieces of cable and what it does simply joins pieces of wire together, you put the wires in either end and you crush them using a crimping tool. So this is how to splice a cable. So what we have in our van, we've got the main one going down to this end light, but what we really wanted was another light to be running off the main cable. So to do that, we need to splice cables together. We need to add this short bit of cable into the main bit of cable leading to the battery. What we do is cut into the cable where we want our splice to be and then we need to strip the cable. Okay, we want to join these three cables together so we need to strip them. One. Twist it up. So then we've got our three exposed pieces of cable and we want to make them all join together. So what we've done is using a butt connector, I was twisting these two up together. I then pop them in one end of this, crimp that end up, and then pop this in the other end, crimp this end up, check the ends all nice and secure. What we then do is obviously do the other cable and connect these ends to the lights. The other thing that we used were bullet connectors. It looks a bit like a bullet and it simply has a male and a female and the male slots into the female. And we use these on the end of our lights. So you've got the female there and inside the van we've got the male on the end of the cable. So the first thing that we do is strip the cable. 
We've got some cable strippers here. They work really well. Pull that bit off. Exposed cable. Then we twist it all together so it's held together nice and tight. We then pop our bullet connector on there. Get our crimping tool. Get it in the right bit. And then you just crush it into place. You then test, see if it's nice and secure. That feels really good. And that's it done. Tom has connected all of the lights and the electrics uh, so that we can test it, which is very exciting. It is. So we're going to, we've got our lithium iron battery from Renergy here. He's got a, what have you got? A voltmeter. Testing the voltage. What should we test first? Well, let's test the fan. We have to Again. turn it on though. Oh, oh look, there's light, there's light. Yeah. There was light, yeah. Where? I saw light. Ah. <gasps> Dude. The Take fan, the fan just turned on. The fan oh. just turned on. Oh! <laughs> can you feel air moving? Oh, I can see Yeah, it. look, it's sucking up. Whoop. Dude. It worked though, it oh. worked. Okay, are you ready for this? The light. They look cool though. Okay, turn on that light. Oh no. Oh no. Switch on. Yeah! Oh, Way cool. Hey, that's well bright. That's awesome. That is awesome. So, our little reading light and our little our chair, our working light. Dude, that's sweet. How cute it is, it's so little. Right, disconnecting. Goodbye. But they're all working, so that is the bestest thing ever. And so is the fan. Oh, that was geez. exciting. Thank you for watching. If you liked it, give us a like. Something that we could have done with Gnome before we started was that feeding cable through conduit isn't as easy as it might seem. The first trick is to use Henry and a piece of string to pull it back through. But we tried that with a longer piece with lots of bends in and it was very tricky. We ended up taking the conduit out the van and then feeding it through separately so that the conduit had no bends in and that was easier but still was a struggle. So. <laughs> this, this is why. <laughs> the other thing was that we only ended up putting one piece of cable through one piece of conduit because trying to run two, there was just about enough space but it was very tight. And it'll make it easier if we do need to ever change any cables that we know that we can just get it out of the conduit without having to fight. Something that we found really helpful was to have a plan for where everything was going to go cable wise uh, at the beginning. So we knew where we were going to have our electrics in kind of under the seat, some people have it in the garage and knowing that and having knowing a plan, uh, knowing where we were going to have our lights and having it kind of drawn out in front of us was really helpful because we could kind of picture it. And it also means you know how many pieces of cable you need, how many switches you need, how you need to wire everything up. Have a plan. <laughs> Have a plan. Planning can be tedious. It can be fun, but mainly it can be tedious. Yeah, you do just want to crack on, but yeah. at the end of the day, sometimes spending time planning is is we've learned we've learned that that's really important. And the best part was testing it out because seeing your lights and your fan and everything going mm, was very exciting. Really exciting. It's okay, now we've got YouTube electronics degrees. <laughs> that counts, right? I haven't even got a certificate for that. I think we can print one off. <laughs> I'll make us one. <laughs> if anybody else wants a YouTube electronics certificate. And you watched let a lot us know. you watched a lot of Greg Virgo's videos. Yeah. And that's been super helpful, as have so many of the other videos. So thank you, Greg. Thank you, Van Life Community. Also, we just wanted to say a quick thank you to everyone who's following our van build. Uh, your support is super appreciated. So, mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you very much. We hope to see you in the next video covering insulation. Until then. Bye. Bye. <laughs> and then it'll be a fun game of... You'll switch on your... Maxine, could you hear me? Ow, it's sharp. Oh. oh. Someone's talking to me. They said follow the rainbow. <laughs> I can't quit this, can you hear me?
Hello, can you hear me through the tube? Put it up to your ear. <laughs> Top tip, never put your ear to the tube when your husband says to, because he's gonna yell in your ear. No, I'm not falling for it again. I've got a secret. Listen to the secret. I won't, I won't promise I won't scream. <laughs>